Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com. It's still in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms, please reach out to me directly. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch originally launched in 2018. It was part of the Navitimer 8 collection. This is the Breitling Aviator 8 Automatic Day and Date. A quick history lesson, modern history, that is. Back in 2018, Breitling launched the Navitimer 8 collection. And as the first new collection announced under the new owners and the new CEO, there was a sense of pressure to deliver maximally to everyone from internet search engine users to journalists to existing Breitling fans. And giving the model line the name Navitimer was thought to maximize the attention and the relevance it would be accorded. But here's the thing. This doesn't look like a Navitimer. It doesn't feel like a Navitimer. And truth be told, it isn't a Navitimer. So its original intended name, which was changed to Navitimer at the last minute, was Aviator 8. And now this watch, since 2019, has been the Aviator 8 automatic day and date. As a Navitimer, the shoe didn't fit. But as an Aviator 8, it has its own identity. It stands on its own four lugs. So, since 2019, the Aviator 8 automatic day and date has delivered on Breitling's promises to make its watches easier to wear. 41 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel. It's only 11.4 millimeters thick and 48 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, it wears nicely. Very thin, slides easily underneath the cuff. You could see how this would slide underneath a sleeve almost effortlessly. And looking down the barrel, you can see that the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist. The curvature of the lugs is a nice feature, helping to conform to the arc of the wrist. And even from over the top, which always exaggerates the width of the watch, you can see the lugs are not overhanging. The bracelet features a conforming end link to mate it to the case without any daylight between bracelet and case. You can see it has a sort of slash profile as we move down towards the clasp, a lot like the Professional 3 bracelet. All satin finish. We have removable links fixed in place using screws. We have quite a few divots drilled in pairs into the clasp, so you can use your strap tool to change the anchoring point of the bracelet in the clasp to fine-tune the fit. Now, you can see there are still packaging stickers on this example, meaning the original owner probably just lost his nerve after spending a lot of money on a watch and then wanted to sell it before it got a scratch and depreciated. So no fun for him, but his loss is your gain. Now there is a clamshell lock that allows you to close and lock the clasp shut. So security there, single fold swing arm, high polish. Taking a look at the lug profiles, you can see that they're squared off and downturned. There's a polished bevel on their sides. The mid case is satinated, the lug hoods are polished. We have a crown. That is a screw down crown and the watch is 100 meters water resistant. The bezel features satination outboard and then the inner recesses of the knurling are polished. It is a bi-directional bezel. This was a feature included across the line on the Aviator Knee Navitimer 8 collection. And it glides smoothly. It has no detents, almost like it's on a Norglide bearing, like a Teflon base. So being non-calibrated, it's a guesstimator. And so you know relative to the starting point of the minute hand or the hour hand, uh, but not precisely. It is nevertheless useful in the same sense that a dive bezel is useful, albeit in the bright of the day. You can easily tell roughly the quarters and then the hour elapsed. Now we'll do a loom shot here so you can get a sense of the watch in the dark. It's well loomed though, regrettably a little bit. The pearl on the bezel is not loomed. Take a look at the dial, matte black, anti-reflective, printed numerals. We have a stepped track outboard, a flange that acts as a track for the seconds and the minutes hands. The Breitling B now bereft of wings. And to find that across the watch, the idea is to elevate Breitling from its previous 
one might say pigeonholing as a pilot's watch brand and make it a sports watch brand for land, sea, and air, not just one. Now, this watch is more of a all-arounder than a sports watch. At least, it's not an all-out sports watch. With the combination of a thin profile, a broadly wearable size, and a day and a date, this is a watch you wear all the time. Automatic, loomed, steel, full bracelet, 100 meters water resistant, and it's got a hacking seconds function. So you can stop the watch and set it to a reference time. But then you've also got a double quick set, so you can set the day. And you can also set the date. Hacking, quick set, four hertz, bi-directional, automatic winding, 38 hour power reserve, chronometer certified, five position adjusted, and underneath we have the Breitling Caliber 45. So that is an ETA 28362 in chronometer grade, the highest available. If you love this watch, reach out to me. I am T. Mosso with thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.